Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Ellen and welcome to the journey of a rare plant and the different ways in which you can buy them. So you're into rare and unusual plants, plants which can't really be found in big box stores. You have to basically look online, whether that be direct from the grower or from a bespoke plant shop. Now, what people don't talk about is the process that these plants go through to go from the grower to your doorstep, how that actually affects the price you pay for said plant and the risks involved in the process. I say this, of course, because a house plant is a live good and live goods cannot be bought without risk, whether that be from the buyer's side or the seller's side. In this video, we are going to discuss this timeline and at which points you can intercept this timeline to buy what is considered a rare or exotic plant. We're also going to talk about the pros and cons of intercepting the different points in the timeline in order for you to make a more informed decision about the purchase and how you'd personally like to go about buying these houseplants. For this video, I've done a kind of overview as to what I think the process is from a plant essentially beginning with the grower in another exotic country, such as Thailand or Indonesia, for example, all the way to basically your house. So I've broken it down into the following steps that I think are important. To start, the plants are grown and propagated in growers' nurseries. The plants are then sold from the grower, either retail or wholesale, which is very interesting and we're going to cover this. Then I'm going to talk about the shipping process. What I mean by this is the shipping process from the grower to yourself or from the grower to a individual, such as a shop. Then at this point, plants are sold by either private sellers or plant shops. We're then going to talk about the shipping process part two. I haven't given it a better name, but essentially I want to talk about this shipping process separately to the first one because I believe it is slightly different. I'm going to get into the reasons as to why that is, obviously, as we go through the video. The last step, of course, is the plant reaching you, reaching your doorstep. So before we take a deep dive into this timeline, I want to give a very, very quick notice on poached plants because this I'm not considering part of the timeline. Occasionally, unfortunately, we do see people collecting plants from the wild and trying to sell them on the internet to make a profit. This is totally illegal and considered extremely ill behavior in the plant community and is not tolerated. If you suspect you have been offered a plant that has been essentially taken from the wild or poached, please decline to make that purchase and report the individual responsible wherever you can. As I say, it's not part of the timeline because it shouldn't be part of the timeline, but I did want to mention it just so we cover all grounds here because technically these things do happen. It sucks, but it happens. Okay, so the first step in our little journey from our rare plant to our doorstep is of course with the grower. I'm counting this as the first step. Growers usually propagate a given plant until they have enough numbers of that plant that they deem okay to start selling. They will, of course, keep a percentage back as mother plants, so they continue this process over and over. The amount of each plant that a grower has to offer depends usually on three things. The first is the amount of mother plants they have. Now, usually supply and demand more or less dictate this. If a plant isn't in high demand, the grower is not likely to put their time and energy into growing and propagating propagating these plants in order to sell. The second factor is the ease of propagation, i.e. does the plant propagate easy? Does it have a low failure rate? I'm sure we've all taken propagations of plants at home and they have failed. Some are just a little bit easier than others. This does apply to the growers growing these plants as well. Obviously, if they have a high failure rate, they're going to get less propagations and the plant is less available and leaks onto the market much slower. The third factor is the speed of growth on the individual plant in question, which can be either down to the grower's experience or the grower's climate, or just the plant itself, to be honest. The second step in the process is the grower selling the plants. Now, this is quite an interesting one. A lot of changes have happened in the last two to three years on this. This used to be a little bit different from what it is now. 
Generally speaking, growers overseas, so be it Thailand, be it Indonesia, either offer retail, wholesale, a combination of both. That's generally the options that you have. If you're unaware of the difference between these two things, basically to sell wholesale is to allow the sale of a large quantity of items, often at a reduced price per unit, which in this case is a plant. More often than not, there is a minimum quantity actually required in order to buy a plant wholesale. This can range from grower to grower, usually dependent on stock levels. Now, this is why a lot of people can't buy wholesale if you're buying retail, because the sheer amount of plants required to purchase the plant you want is just out of scope for most people. That is why this option is usually reserved for shops. To sell retail is basically to offer the item at a higher price and can be sold to an individual buying essentially one plant at a time. The way in which growers sell these plants has changed a lot. This is probably due to supply and demand generally, but this has been massively impacted by COVID-19. Prior to this, many growers offered plants at wholesale prices and they were considered quite cheap. The only catch, obviously, is you would have to buy an awful lot of them. Now, however, the concept of selling wholesale for many growers is not even an option anymore. This is due to the fact that the quantities of plants aren't there. Not only that, but the market value of a given plant is often four or five times higher than the price it previously was when they were able to offer wholesale. So what I'm saying is it's not really worth the money to them. They would be losing money if they did this. As a result, growers, certainly as of recording this video, are only really offering retail prices and they are selling plants at a price reflective of plant shop prices. This means whether you are a shop or an individual customer, you are paying the exact same price for the same plant. The fact that this is usually the only option now means that plant shops do buy the plants at these prices and then add on extra margin. This further inflates the market value. This then encourages the growers to add on extra margin to their prices because they can see the prices that the shops are charging. Now the shops now have to buy back the same plant at the grower's new price and then keep on adding a margin. And in that way, it's cyclic. It keeps on repeating itself from the shop side to the grower's side, from the shop side to the grower's side. It's a never ending cycle. The only way this cycle can be broken is obviously if the demand for the product decreases. That said, buying direct from the grower is the first point in this timeline, in this stage process that you can purchase a plant. Now, we're going to talk about the shipping process a little bit because honestly, this is where the real pros and cons start to come into play. Now, as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, there are two shipping processes involved. The first shipping process is from the grower direct to either to a shop or an individual such as yourself. And the second shipping process is from a private seller to yourself or from a shop to yourself. This part of the video though, specifically focuses on the shipping process from the grower. So when you buy from a grower and the plant comes literally from them to you, to your doorstep, this is considered buying direct because of course there is no middleman, it's just you and the grower. Now this doesn't actually mean that your plant is just put neatly in a box and it just gets to you and everything's fine. The process is actually a lot more involved. In order for a live plant to legally leave the grower, if it is in a different country from that grower and it's flying across the world, e.g. from Indonesia to say the USA, it will need to be inspected by an official plant health authority in the grower's country and be provided with a certificate. This certificate is known as a phytosanitary certificate and is usually provided at an additional cost to the buyer. This certificate is basically to state that the plant that is with the grower has been grown, prepared and essentially shipped according to the regulations of the destination country's plant health agency. So if we're shipping from Indonesia to USA, this certificate will say that this, the way that it is being done, the way that the plant is being grown, prepared, inspected, everything like that conforms to the rules of US Customs Plant Health Inspection Agency. Now, depending on the grower, you will be offered either phytosanitary documentation included, which is possibly at an additional price. You could be offered phytosanitary documentation optional at an additional price. You could just not be offered any phytosanitary documentation at all. And a lot of growers do actually publicly state that they don't offer this documentation as well. 
One thing I must stress, if you are going to buy a plant at this stage in the timeline, please, 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 buy your plant with phytosanitary documentation. I know rare plants are expensive, okay? And I know you might think that you're making a saving in doing this, but you're actually taking a huge gamble. If you purchase a plant without this documentation, the required documentation, if customs in your country inspect and discover there is a plant inside the box, it will be destroyed. And in the majority of cases, the grower will not refund you for it. Something to consider here is that in order for a plant to pass inspection, the roots of the plant need to be treated pretty aggressively. This process usually involves scrubbing the roots with a brush and dipping the plant in reasonably harsh chemicals to remove any biological life or medium on the plant. Speaking from experience here, different plants handle this process differently. Some plants are reasonably okay, some plants can go into quite severe shock. Other plants can completely rot the root, either on arrival or maybe up to two weeks after import. Honestly, it's a little bit of a lottery. So when you do buy your plants direct from a grower, they will have nothing on the root at all. Now, some growers ship their roots wrapped in sphagnum moss, others do it in tissue paper. It really depends on the country of where you're buying the plants from as to how they are shipped to you. From experience, moss is a hell of a lot better than tissue paper. From experience, this whole process can take about a week from the plant being removed from the media it's in and sat bare root until it's actually inspected and shipped, which does pose the risk of the plant drying out in the air. When you combine all these factors I've mentioned, when you do buy direct from the grower, you are going to have a significant rehab time on your plant. That's because the nature of the way these plants are prepared, they can decline really quickly. That could be on arrival, it could be before they even arrive, or it could be up to two weeks after they've arrived. Buying direct from the grower is cheaper, but the responsibility and the rehabilitation of the plant is placed solely on yourself. If the plant dies, the responsibility is placed on you. And as I mentioned before, some growers do, not a lot of them actually refund you if this happens. Buying plants in this way is widely considered at your own risk. Unfortunately, we're not done yet because depending on where you are from in the world, World, you might have to pay some extra fees. This does not mean that you've paid your money for your plant and your phytosanitary documentation and that's it. Not only that, but there's extra paperwork required sometimes. Now, it's different from country to country. For example, in the USA, you don't need any kind of import permit if you are buying 10 plants or less. Whereas in Canada, if you want to buy one single plant, you do legally require an import permit. So as I say, it totally depends on where you're from, but you might need additional paperwork and you might not be aware of it. As for the UK, the UK now requires all commercial and personal importers to be registered and every single shipment coming into the country should be notified and inspected. Failure to pre-notify and have all the required information in place will result in significant delays, sometimes by two weeks or more. I don't need to tell you what that might mean. Providing you've done everything that is required for you to do, plants are inspected upon arrival to the destination country, at which point the plant health agency in that country open and inspect your shipment. Documents are then checked and additional fees are issued. You could also be liable for further import duty and tax. I've touched on this earlier, but one final thing to note here, if something goes wrong in this process, nine times out of 10, the grower will not refund you. If a plant gets delayed in customs, you probably won't get a refund. If a plant certainly doesn't have the documentation, you will not get a refund. If the plant dies on arrival, you probably won't get a refund. Buying plants in this way can be a bit of a gamble and it is considered at your own risk. Now we've covered the shipping process, we can move on to private sellers and plant shops. Which ones you could potentially purchase from and which one might be best for you? Let's start with private sellers. Private sellers can usually be found on Instagram, Etsy, eBay or Facebook. eBay and Etsy give you more security over your purchase, whereas Facebook or Instagram do not. The only way you can have any kind of protection over Instagram and Facebook is if you use PayPal and you use the goods and services option, not the friends and family option. 
If you do use the goods and services option via PayPal, then PayPal can essentially fight your case if something goes wrong, whether it goes lost in the post, whether the seller missold you or just anything of the sort. That said, many private sellers unfortunately will not permit you to use this option and will instead insist that you use the friends and family option. There are, as you might expect, pros and cons from buying from a private seller. I'm going to label this one as a pro rather than a con because I think it ultimately is a pro and that is that private sellers will offer a wide range of sizes of plants. It's not one consistent size. So if you're wanting to save a little bit of money on buying whatever plant it is that you want, you can probably find a cutting of said plant for much cheaper. So in that sense, your flexibility on pricing is pretty good. Pricing can vary a lot with private sellers. You might get a great deal. You might pay slightly more than what you wanted to. This is usually just dependent on the value that the seller puts on their own plant. In terms of refunds, it's completely up to the seller as to what they want to do. This is assuming that you paid friends and family. As I mentioned before, if you paid via goods and services, you have some options there. Let's just assume that you haven't for one moment. It's really down to the seller whether they want to refund you. Feel free to ask your seller on what they consider to be grounds for a refund, i.e. ask them on their terms of sale before you purchase your plant. That way you're a little bit more in the know about the whole process. Regarding the documentation you need for your plant, private sellers often can't or won't provide any kind of documentation. This includes phytosanitary documentations or plant passports. This is usually because the inspection and registration fees that are required to be able to do this are quite costly. However, as a standard, anyone in the UK or EU, for example, that is shipping a plant for profit, i.e. money has been exchanged, needs to be registered with their own country's plant health agency and be registered to supply a plant passport with the shipped plant. If they do not do this, they are unfortunately breaking the law. And just to be crystal clear, this does apply to private sellers as well as shops. Technically, this means anyone selling plants privately in Facebook groups and stating that they will not be providing any documentation is trading illegally. Even selling plants within the UK, because I don't know how many people know this, if you are shipping a plant from one person to another within the UK, you are still required by law to produce a plant passport, otherwise it is illegal. It goes without saying, therefore, that if you do choose to purchase a plant from a private seller that is not providing you the right documentation, then it does still pose a risk as if plants are found in customs, the same applies to the, the first shipping process that we covered, in that if customs find this plant, there's no documentation, it will be destroyed. Whether the seller refunds you is up to them, unless you've used the payment protection. Let's move on now to the pros and cons of buying from a plant shop. This option is usually, but not always, considered the most expensive way to buy your houseplant. As I mentioned at the start of the video, plant shops buy plants from the grower and then add on a margin. The reason they add on this margin is as follows. The first reason is that the shop has already undergone the process of buying direct from the grower and paid all taxes and import fees associated with that shipment. They've undertaken all of the risks we've covered so far and they've also probably accounted for losses in stock along the way. So any plants lost in that shipment that were dead on arrival or died very quickly soon after after, those losses have been accounted for and likely included in the margin of that specific plant. The second reason is that the plant shop should have acclimated plants fully. This usually takes place over weeks or even in some cases a few months. This takes time, energy and of course money. The cost of feeding, heating, watering these plants all must be covered as expenses in order for this shop to turn a profit. The third reason, and this won't necessarily apply to every plant shop out there, but if the plant shop is able to ship internationally, they will have already paid a huge amount in inspection and registration fees with the appropriate authorities because it's quite costly. In order to print a phytosanitary certificate or a plant passport costs money as well on top of that. This usually costs money per certificate. 
These are usually hidden costs within the price of your plant. It's quite possible that when you buy from a plant shop, they will have included all these fees except perhaps phytosanitary documentation, which they may mark separately. The fourth and final reason, and again, this does not necessarily apply to all plant shops, is that a lot of shops tend to have a guarantee on their plants. What this means is, say you buy the plant and for whatever reason it gets lost in shipping, it doesn't make it to you, it makes it to you in really bad condition, or within a certain period of time of you being in receipt of the plant, the plant declines more than what is considered reasonable shipping stress. A lot of plant shops will either refund the item or replace the item. This is usually dependent on stock levels. Another thing to note about plant shops, and again, this could be a pro or a con, depending on what you're looking for, but plant shops tend to order a more standardized size of plant. There aren't many sizing options. Depending on what you're looking for, this is going to make your purchase more easy or more difficult. Now, I'm not really going to cover flipping in this video. I'm gonna gloss over it because honestly, this is either a video in itself or it's definitely part of another video that I have planned for you guys. But I do wanna say a few words about it now. For anyone that is unaware of what the word flipping means, within the plant community, it basically means buying a plant from wherever it is and immediately shipping it out to somebody else without any kind of acclimation or care towards the plant. Flipping is not accepted in the plant community in any shape or form, as more often than not, plants die within a few days to two weeks of arrival at your doorstep. As of course, they've undergone the stress of shipping twice within a short space of time, often within a week of the plant being in the seller's possession. Flipping can be witnessed in the private seller community and yes, unfortunately, it can also be witnessed in plant shops. Now, there are ways to kind of tell if your plant may have been flipped. I'm not going to get into it now. That's probably a whole video on that process. If you'd like to see a video on that, please leave a comment below. One final thing to talk about involving private sellers and more often than not shops is the subject of pre-sale. You may have seen adverts here and there on the internet of shops basically offering up plants for what is called pre-sale. These shops are essentially funding the purchase of the big box of plants that they buy from the grower with your money rather than their own. This is usually because they have no capital in their business. In this sense, they're basically acting not as a shop, but as a broker. They're acting as a middleman between you and the grower. Now, sometimes shops will acclimatize the stock they receive. Sometimes they won't. This can pose a huge risk to you if you choose this option. This is mainly because, as I mentioned before, the shop is using your money for the purchase and not their own. This means if something goes wrong, for example, the box of plants they order arrives and let's just say they're all dead, they cannot refund you because they have no money to refund you. And I know that sounds very unfortunate, but it does happen. And there have been some quite notable cases in our community where this has happened. There have even been some cases where shops have assured their customers ahead of time that if something goes wrong, they will be refunded and not to worry. And something has gone wrong. The customers have asked for their money back and the shop basically said no a lot of customers never got their money back. So in that sense, it's an absolutely huge risk. And honestly, established shops do not choose this option. An established plant shop will not offer pre-sale. This is usually because they are very familiar with the import process and they're aware of the amount of stock they are probably inevitably going to lose in this process. That way they could never promise to deliver a certain amount of plants to a certain amount of customers. It's literally impossible to predict. So many factors can affect this, whether it's weather, delays due to e.g. the pandemic, courier delays, anything of the sort. If you want to participate in a pre-sale, that's totally up to you. Just please be aware of the fact that the company involved in this pre-sale may not have the money to pay you back if everything doesn't go as planned. So we talked about the shipping process earlier on from the grower direct to a shop or direct to a private individual. I'm now going to talk about the shipping process from predominantly a shop to a private individual because I do believe this process is slightly different from the first process that we mentioned. 
Shipping from a private seller or a shop, depending on the rules of your country, could mean that you receive your plants in generally much better condition than that of shipping direct from the grower. For example, if a plant is shipped from somewhere much more local to you, i.e. within your country, then the plant might still be in soil. It might have zero root disturbance, which undoubtedly will lead to a better transit and a much less rehab time, if there even is any rehab time. For shops that do ship plants bare root, some, but not all, plant shops do grow their plants and prepare them in such a way that is non-aggressive towards the root system, i.e. no scrubbing, no super harsh chemicals. This, of course, again, means the same thing. It means there is going to be less rehab time on your plant and the plant should arrive generally in much better condition. In addition to this, both private sellers and shops do offer you a lot more flexibility in terms of shipping. Often you are offered standard or express delivery. With private sellers, you can very often pick your own delivery methods and even sometimes your own courier. With a plant shop, you're nearly always offered an express option with your plants when you purchase them at checkout. Again, this means less transit time, less stress on the plant, less rehab time. The last stage in this process is, of course, the plant has arrived at your doorstep. And no matter where you choose to buy your plant from, your plant may or may not require some rehabilitation time. If you're interested in this, I'm not going to cover it in today's video. I actually have a full video on how to rehab your house plant after shipping. A lot of people do tell me that they use it all the time and it's pretty helpful. So if you're interested in some things you could do to make that process a little bit more smoother for you, and this does still account for if you bought direct from a grower, the tips still apply, please look at that link in the description and give that a watch. You may find it helps. So we've talked about an awful lot so far, and I think now it's time to really summarize the pros and cons of buying at each point in our little timeline of the plant being at the grower's nursery to essentially reaching your doorstep. So when you boil it down, you can buy plants in three different ways. Those three ways are essentially number one, which is direct from the grower to yourself, number two, from a private seller, and number three, from a plant shop. Let's start with direct from the grower. So a plus side of buying direct from the grower is that the plants are going to be generally a little bit cheaper than what you would pay from a private seller or the prices of a plant shop. Unfortunately, the phytosanitary preparation and general shipping process is often pretty aggressive and quite detrimental to the health of your plant. This obviously means that the rehabilitation time compared with that of a private seller or a shop is going to be significantly longer. Refunds or replacements are not usually an option when buying direct as it's widely considered at your own risk. Typically, shipping times can be much longer as well, whether that be from the purchase to the actual shipping of the plant or just the general shipping process. Some shipments from growers take up to two weeks to reach you, so that is definitely something to factor in. A general point to consider, and this actually applies to anything on this list, but I'm probably going to keep repeating myself, additional import fees and taxes may be required when you buy one of these plants in this manner. Next, we have buying from a private seller, a good pro. It, I mean, this could be a pro or a con, as I've mentioned before, but I'm going to include it as a pro. And that is that the plants that are offered to you vary quite a lot in size. Typically speaking, this, as I mentioned before, could mean that you save a little bit of money wherever you want to if you buy a cutting rather than a full plant. A con of this is that payment protection is not often guaranteed. As I say, some sellers do, a lot of sellers don't. The best thing to do, of course, is to ask your seller. Unfortunately, buying from a private seller nine times out of ten documentation is not actually issued and of course this is illegal and if your plants are discovered in customs then of course they will be destroyed. Another thing is that refunds are usually done at the discretion of the seller and replacements are not usually an option. This is usually due to the fact that the private seller doesn't have ten of whatever plant in stock they only have the one cutting that they propagated themselves. Points to consider again additional import fees and taxes may be required. Not only that, but this is the first entry point of essentially flipping, which means that the plant may or may not be acclimated before you actually purchase it, which basically means the plant has an increased chance of not making it, of dying. 
Last but not least, purchasing from a plant shop. So a pro of purchasing from a plant shop, again, it could be a con, but I'm labeling it as a pro, is that the plant quality and size is often a lot more standardized. There's usually, not always, but usually a lot more of the same thing to go around. So the availability is generally a little bit better. Where documentation is concerned, as long as the shop is trading legally, the proper documentation should be supplied to you. This could just be phytosanitary documentation. This could be customs forms. This could be plant passports. It could be some other document that is required by your plant health inspection agency. When buying from a plant shop, payment protection, if done through the proper channels, is often guaranteed. If something goes wrong, PayPal is at your disposal or your card company is also at your disposal. Refunds and replacements are usually, but not always of course, an option dependent on stock levels. But as I mentioned before, there is a higher availability of stock, so you have more of a chance of getting a replacement if something goes wrong with your plant. An obvious con of plant shops, as I mentioned earlier, is that they are more expensive than buying direct from a grower. Sometimes more expensive than buying privately, sometimes not more expensive buying privately. That is totally down to the shop's price and the private seller's price. Points to consider, again, to repeat myself, sorry, additional import fees may or may not be required. The plant may or may not be acclimated. Yes, flipping does unfortunately happen with plant shops. And I didn't put this in a pro because I'm not fully aware of how many plant shops do this, but it is possible that you may get a further guarantee on your plant after purchase. It may last a few days within you receiving your plant. So it may last 14 days, it may last 10 days, it may last seven days, it may last three days. Sometimes those extra few days are what can really set your purchase apart. As I said, it's not a required thing of a shop and not every shop might have this, but it's a point to consider. So we've covered a lot in this video, but it's now time to summarize essentially everything we've talked about here today. There is, generally speaking, a timeline or a series of steps involved when a rare plant comes available on the market and it leaves the grower to yourself. Whereabouts on this timeline or at which stage in the process you wish to buy a plant is solely up to you. And as long as the person or party selling you the plant is operating legally, then there is no right or wrong way to buy a plant. It really boils down to, if you could summarize everything I've said in this video in a couple of sentences, it basically boils down to, do you want to spend less money and take more risk? Or do you want to spend more money and take less risk? And if you look back at every single stage that we've talked about, you will notice that the ratio of cost versus risk changes for each point in this process. So really it's about the risk that you perceive okay for you. And as I've said before, as long as whoever it is that is selling you these plants are operating legally, then there is no right or wrong answer. The aim of this video is really just to shed light on the general process and to basically deliver you your options because ultimately it's down to you what you want to do. I just wanted to give you a broad overview of the situation and to really give you the tools to make your own decisions on what you think is best for you. If you have any questions on the things we've covered in today's video, please feel free to leave a comment down below and either myself or a lovely member of the comment section will be sure to help you out. If I've found anything useful, a current video that exists of mine that really helps in explaining some of the terms in this video or for example it's just helpful generally like the rehabbing plants after shipping video I've linked them all down in the description so you can just take a look at that if you like this video please leave a like down below if you'd like to see any more of my content then please feel free to subscribe thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next video bye